My question has to do with, you had made a statement just a little while back about if someone is coming to you and they start talking about negative things, say, stop, 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 don't want to hear it, doesn't serve me, doesn't serve you. We're not saying that you should necessarily say it out loud, but we want it to be your sentiment. We want that to be the attitude that you move through life with. That yes. is, and how do I do that in a gracious way when it's my boyfriend, say example, or my... My boyfriend would be where it's really at right now. <laughs> He's going through some rough times, and I want to allow... I don't know how to handle it, because it does make me go... Oh, the conversation God. that we just had about the rumble strips is really the answer to your question, because as long as you feel that you have control of what you're doing vibrationally, then when you are in the receptive mode, that's also the replenishing mode. And when you're in the replenishing mode, then you have plenty of well-being that you can direct to others. Right. The question is, this is the thing that you want to be aware of. If you're not in the replenishing right. mode, and so you are being deplenished in the experience, now that's when you want to break away and do something different because now you've got some momentum going that seems to have the upper hand. But if you are tuned in... No, no, no. It, 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 when I'm tuned in, it's fine. And so I guess I'm looking for guidance when... I'm not tuned in. And so, so the answer isn't maybe always I... the same, is it? The answer isn't always the same. The answer is when you know that you're tuned in, then you have plenty of clarity to keep offering. But if it's moved too far and now you are being deplenished. Or he catches me when I'm already not totally in alignment. Well, you see, that's the And thing. I drew it in then, obviously. We weren't going to bring that up. But now that you mention it. I know. I mean, I know. I know I'm the... Bring it in. We want to point out that you do usually meet people. In other words, if someone has a proclivity to negativity, and let's say you usually don't, but for whatever reason you're there, and you rendezvous, it doesn't matter who's there more often. The fact is, there you are. And when you feel it, do something about it. Don't spend any time trying to figure out someone else's part in the rendezvous. That'll make you crazy. Just figure out your part in the rendezvous. And so earlier we talked about this, and we really want you to hear this. Sometimes your part in the rendezvous is that you are an uplifter, and they have some desire to be uplifted. And so the universe has put you together because you are solidly in the replenishing mode. And there is a strong probability that you are going to have good timing and say just the right thing. And so it's like a match that has been orchestrated in the ethers. Sometimes you're just rendezvousing because you're both in that place. And it doesn't matter how you got there or why you got there, or who's been there longer. The fact that you're meeting up means that you are meeting on some vibrational level. And what comes next in terms of emotion to you will tell you. If you've met them because you are a teacher and they are a student, then you're going to feel exhilaration during this conversation. You will not feel like you're being depleted in any way and ideas will flow to you and you'll be making connections and you'll be making statements that are meaningful to them and good things will come from it but if you've met them because you're both equally not in a good place then it's going to feel irritating to you and annoying to you and most significantly it's the momentum of the conversation is going to increase and your emotion is going to negatively increase too. Yes. So just some guidance or tips when I know I'm meeting in a place because I'm there too. How do I... Well, if you know you're there before you meet, send out a warning. Right. That would be... <laughs> I'm in a bad mood. Run, run, run. It's not right. Run. If I'm aware of it enough, then I can. But sometimes... One I of the things can, that we so... notice about all of you is that and maybe that, just let it be. Well, right. you don't have any choice, really. Right. Other than to just let it be. But each experience you have, you can make a stronger determination about what's going to happen next time. We don't want you to make a big thing about your negative or positive rendezvous. We want you to make a big thing about your connection with who you are. In other words, it's your relationship with your inner being that you want to tend to. And then everything else will take care of itself. And the rendezvous that you are having of a physical nature are more pointing out to you what your relationship with your inner being is in any moment in time. We've been saying to you for a while that if you've got some negative emotion going on and you're not consciously aware of it, you're just sort of putting up with it because it feels sort of normal to you. So you're not utilizing your guidance system in the most effective way. Don't worry about it. The negative emotion will get bigger. 
And if you still don't notice, don't worry about it. The negative emotion will get bigger until eventually you will be aware of it. But sometimes by the time you're aware of it, the momentum is so strong that even though you really want to break out of it, you can't because there's too much momentum. And the only thing that's going to break it is if you take a nap or go to bed or meditate or whatever. So sometimes you just grind yourself into the ground by going on and on and on about it. So the key really is to be aware of where you are and don't couple up unless you know you're in a good place. That would be your gift to humanity. Right. <laughs> and for a while there would be a lot of hermits, a lot of people off in isolated places. Oh, look at all of those people. They're not communicating with each other. They're out of the vortex. So you might just say, I'm going to do you a favor and I'm not going to share myself with you because nothing good is going to come from my rendezvousing with you because of where I'm at and mean it. And really, don't you know, don't you find yourself, if you're having a hard time maintaining your vibration, don't you find yourself craving solitude? And the reason that you do is because what you want to shore up is your relationship between you and your inner being. That's not exactly solitude that's coming into alignment, but it's solitude. It's coming into harmony with who you really are, you see. And we think anyone who's been around you for a little bit of time, usually you would see warning signs. Esther's sister, Jeannie, used to be so amazed that Esther would just blunder in to trouble with their father. Because Jeannie always knew when he was in a bad mood. And Esther seemed to be oblivious to it. She just sort of blundered in and made trouble for everyone. And we want you to be aware of what's going on with your vibration. That really is what you're asking about. Do you think you are aware? Yes, generally I am. And I think with him, I maybe turn too much into caretaker and wanting to make him happy. There is an attitude with many of you. It's sort of who this clump of people is, who you are. <laughs> you are interested in service which is something you were born with you are interested in uplifting but now with this conversation that we've been experiencing together today you can tell when you are in service to someone when you're really helping them and when you're not and so the theme of so much that we've talked about here today this is what we would like you to take away from this gathering is getting out ahead of it. If you wake up and you care about how you feel, and so you're doing something about getting in sync with who you are. First of all, law of attraction is not going to match you up with someone who's very far different from you. And if law of attraction does match you up with someone who's very far different from you, it's because they're asking for something that you have to give them, which is a really good time to visit with them. So can you feel how we cannot give you an answer that says, always stay away or always get together. There's no pat answer to this. The answer is depending upon whether you're in the receiving mode that feels good or the receiving mode that doesn't feel good. So if you're tuned in, tapped in, turned on and law of attraction has put you together, the reason that law of attraction has put you together is because someone has a question and someone has an answer. Can you feel the harmony in that? There's harmony. So let's take this further. We've never been here before. So let's go here now. This is wonderful new understanding. Oh, you're going to like this. So every subject is two subjects. Yes. It's like a stick with what's wanted on one end and the absence of what's wanted on the other end. So let's say that you're on the wanted end of the stick. You're tuned in, tapped in, turned on. And let's say your boyfriend is on the unwanted end of the stick. Still there's harmony in this stick, isn't there? There's desire that is being asked for that you're letting in. It's like asking and answering, asking and answering all in the same place, asking and answering all in the same place. So if you maintain your vibrational frequency with the answer and he's asking with earnest in some way, then the connection is going to feel good to both of you. You're both going to be glad that you had the experience. Your vibration is not going to take a dip and his vibration is going to rise. That's co-creation at its best. That's what this extraordinary, diverse, contrasting environment really provides. Did you hear that? But let's say that you're really not tuned in and he brings up a subject and you're not ready for it. And so you're gravitating more to that end of the stick. So both of you are in the problem end of the stick. Now, nobody's going to uplift anybody. 
And it's just going to be a conversation of complaint. And you're both going to practice a momentum that's going to come back to bite you in the sense that now you've been broadcasting it. You're not as practiced at the other. Anytime you spend any airtime complaining about something, it makes your ability to move into this receptive mode more difficult. Doesn't mean you can't do it, but it does mean you're going to have to focus in a stronger way. So what happens with so many of you as you are playing with each other is you really like to hang around with people who are tuned in because if they're tuned in, you do have a greater probability through your observation of them that your vibration is going to be lifted. And there is nothing in the world wrong with that. That's the greatest service that you could ever offer to be in that place, not bothered by what's bothering other people and acting as an example of someone who is there. You could even talk about the subject that's bothering them because in your alignment, you're speaking through the eyes and ears and mouth of source. That's what true compassion is. You're having a conversation about something that's bothering them, but you're not being depleted in the process because you weren't depleted when it started so this is the subject that we really want you to hear check your depletion level before you enter into any conversations with anyone and there are a lot of you you've become sort of codependent on each other because if you're not feeling good you're looking for somebody that will raise you and that's a trap because when you're looking for somebody that will raise you then you're in a vibrational frequency where their likelihood is you're not going to be raised. And the likelihood is you may not find somebody that has the ability to raise you. And so that's why we want you to not be dependent on each other for that. So you don't want to go out and be hermits, do you? And it's fun to co-create, but let's get out ahead of this. Let's stop for a moment, this problem solving mode that we're kind of in. And let's instead talk about what you really intended. So you intended to fill your vortex full of all kinds of ideas and to let that vortex gestate. And you intended that law of attraction would gather the cooperative components. You knew that it would, and it has, it does. And so now it's ripe and ready for you. So you kind of understand that we know that you do. You're getting the sense of this vibrational reality that's ready for you to translate into something that is tangible. So you're basking because it feels good and you're meditating because it feels good and you're being kinder to yourself because it feels good and you're doing more things that feel good because it feels good and you're really getting a handle on this and so you're mastering this you're tuned in tapped in tuned on a lot of the time and so now you get an idea and the idea feels so good and so you follow it out and it's logical that other people will join you there and when your boyfriend joins you under those conditions you have the most blissful conversations and the most blissful rendezvous where things that are happening to you are happening to both of you Jerry and Esther would say to each other all the time I'm so glad that we both saw that because nobody else would ever believe that in other words watching the cooperative universe and having someone else to share it and compound it and play off of it and milk it with that's just the most delightful experience and all kinds of cooperative components are coming to you to share that so that's the way you want a rendezvous with your boyfriend. And of course there will be other rendezvous, but that's the one you want. That's the one you're focused on. That's the one you work for. Not by trying to change him, not by trying to train him, not by trying to teach him, but by making sure that you're there most of the time. Do you know? Huh. That's why you ever have positive emotion because your inner being is always there. And every now and again, you join your inner being there and wham, you feel elation or you feel clarity or you feel love. That's you joining the larger part of who you are. Wouldn't you like to be that larger part for others? But here's the tricky part. Want to be that larger part for others, but don't be mad when they're not that for you. Because you don't need them to be that. You've got your inner being to be that for you. And they've got their inner being to be that for them. They just don't know it. So you can be that for them before they know that their inner being is that for them. But isn't it nice when you come together with others and you both know that you both have an inner being that's that for each of you. So then you can get on with having the relationship of your dreams by saying to the other, I love you very much, but what you think of me is none of my business. I don't really care. It's not really important to me. I'm not going to jump through hoops to try to please you anymore because even though I love you with all of my heart, you're fickle and I can't count on you to always be here. My inner being's always here. My inner being is a stable measurement for me to know where I am. But when I measure myself against you, 
Now we're trying to decide what behavior is right and what the right words are and oh you could have said that differently and, and if you tried just a little bit you could have made me feel a little better about that and we say ah 